G'day, Stephen Playford is my name. I'm President of Australian Sheepskin Apparel located in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Australian Sheepskin Apparel has been operating now since 1996 and the purpose or the role of Australian Sheepskin Apparel has been to import medical grade sheepskin products and manufacture uh, footwear, wheelchair accessories, bed pads and such in a bid to prevent wounds occurring on individuals that are at risk of developing pressure sores, moisture related wounds, shearing related wounds and such. Since its inception, Australian Medical Sheepskin has proven to be an extremely effective product in, uh, in doing such. And where it came from was that in Australia back in uh, the, the, the 90s, uh, wound care was a major problem in our health system and a major cost factor to the system. And it was decided that uh, we needed to come up with something to stop people developing wounds going through surgery that after their surgery is completed, they're being treated for 15 to 20 weeks uh, because of wounds that occurred whilst they were going through surgery itself. The, our Minister for Health uh, got together with some other associates and came up with a product that, that was able to be laundered to the temperatures required by infection control and met the standards so that it could be passed from patient to patient without any fear of cross-infection. product was also colour-coded green so that it is immediately identifiable as the medical grade sheepskin, not a white sheepskin that does not meet the, uh, the infection control standards or grey or blue, any other coloured sheepskin is what we refer to as a domestic grade sheepskin, not a medical grade. So any of the green medical sheepskin that you see from Australian Sheepskin Apparel will conform to the standards required by infection control. We also know that the product is a major preventative, as we said, for pressure, moisture and shearing related wounds. Not only in this session are we going to be talking about uh, prevention of wounds, but we're also going to be talking about treatment of pre-existing wounds and also preventing wounds from recurring once they've been healed, which is a major factor in the health system itself. You can see here the two gentlemen um, in the, uh, the photographs. The fellow on the left is Dr Michael Woolrich. Uh, he was our Minister for Health in Australia at the time. And the fellow on his right is uh, the Honourable Peter McGoran. He was our Minister for Science and Technology. And these two gentlemen spoke with this fellow, Professor Donald McClellan, uh, who was Chairman of the Wound Foundation of Australia. And he was the fellow that said, if you want to stop wounds from occurring on individuals going through surgery, we need to prevent those wounds from occurring and the best known product is natural sheepskin. So what they needed to do was that they needed to come up with a technology and the tanning process to enable this product to be laundered to the temperatures required by infection control at 80 degrees centigrade for a period of 8 minutes and so that it could be passed from individual patient to patient without the fear of cross infection. That is exactly what they did. What we've now done in Canada as against just a preventative for the product to stop wounds from occurring in people in long-term care and in uh, acute care facilities and even in home care is that we've actually taken the product one step further and utilised the product as a treatment for pre-existing wounds and not only for prevention, uh, prevention of pressure, moisture and shearing related wounds but we're also going to discuss how the product's ability uh, is in treating uh, trauma, burns, surgical and infectious related wounds as well. This is a great, great area that uh, we've gone into and it uh, has had many ramifications for individuals that would otherwise be going through amputations and such with wounds that are progressing with Australian medical sheepskin being able to turn that around and then keep these individuals keeping their limbs uh, and such as well, thus saving an enormous amount of funds to the health system itself. You can see here as far as areas of use uh, in the health system it's, it, itself is concerned. You can see we have prevention of wounds which we've just talked about, also treatment of pre-existing wounds and also the prevention of recurring wounds which is all too often a common uh, situation that occurs. You can see in this next slide this lady is laying on uh, the Australian medical sheepskin with the wool fibre as close to the skin tissue as possible. What that's basically doing is that each follicle of fibre acts like a, a little shock absorber which we'll explain in a little more detail but the product has the ability to reduce pressure, reduce the moisture content of the skin and the face due to the leather on the back as the product is from the Australian Merino sheep and it also has the ability to uh, reduce the shearing action on the skin tissue with the fibres ability to move with the skin tissue as an individual moves, rolls or turns. And we're going to break that down uh, for you a little bit more as we continue on but you can see 
Uh, in this first photograph here, at the top, the lady, this individual is wearing a heel protector to stop the pressure being exerted on the bony prominence of the back of the heel. This heel protector shows a single strap design where my product now has a double strap design which uh, disallows the product if a person is mobile and moving around, disallows the product ending up around the kneecap and such. In the next slide here you can see that this lady is wearing a pair of long boots while she's sitting outside in a wheelchair. This is a perfect preventative measure to stop somebody developing diabetic heel losses with the limbs becoming too cold and such, which we'll discuss in more detail as we go through as well. You can see the third frame there shows the cue ball on the Australian medical sheepskin and the eight ball is sitting on the old synthetic type rug. Synthetic rug is not to be used in the health system as it uh, does not reduce pressure of the skin interface. It uh, does not absorb moisture content away from the skin tissue. It actually helps to elevate body temperature when a person is laying on synthetics, which causes perspiration and moisture content of the skin interface, which is very detrimental to the skin tissue, which we'll talk about as we continue on. Uh, the product's ability then to maintain body temp as a synthetic is, is out the window. The only product that will do that is the Australian Medical Sheepskin that you can see there in that frame. Continuing on, you can see now that we've got, in this photograph, we've got approximately 75,000 fibres per square inch. And each follicle acting like a shock absorber enables the pressure to be distributed uh, much more evenly throughout the body, taking that compression off the capillaries that would normally allow oxygenated blood to flow into those capillaries. And that is on the coccyx, on the back of the heels, on the elbows, and also on the scapula or the shoulder blades. Um, that are bony prominences that are very, very affected by increases in pressure at the skin interface itself. And you can see here that pressure testing on a standard hospital bedding surface measured out at around about uh, 69 millimetres of mercury. With the Australian Medical Sheepskin underneath, you can see that the pressure rating went down to around 25 millimetres of mercury, which is more than a 50% reduction of pressure at the skin interface itself. You can see that uh, the pressure testing that was done on a tilt and recline uh, type wheelchair showed that with a rubber um, eggshell design shaped synthetic product that was designed to reduce pressure uh, on the, uh, the coccyx and on the, uh, the backside and such, that the pressure rating went down to 25.23 millimetres of mercury. Not bad uh, when they're in a tilt and recline uh, type position or 45 degree tilt with a 25 degree recline but the pressure rating was only able to be reduced to 25.23 millimetres of mercury. In the second photograph here you can see they used a T-foam on this tilt and recline wheelchair. They got the pressure rating down to 20.13 uh, 20 millimetres of mercury. Still again, not bad. When they took the T-foam off and put the Australian Medical Sheepskin in the chair itself, the pressure rating went down to 11.89 millimetres of mercury, which almost dropped off the scale, which means that Pressure on the, uh, the, 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 the backside and or the coccyx has been reduced dramatically and the scale on this, this pressure rating uh, mechanism started at 10 millimetres of mercury. So a massive reduction in pressure has taken place there at that point. As we continue on, you can see that in an upright position, a 150 pound individual sitting on a pressure reducing device that's a black rubber device with an eggshell type design to it that the pressure rating measured out, and you can see in the maximum areas here uh, where the red sections are, where the, um, the cheekbones are coming through on the, uh, the posterior itself, the pressure rating was around about 200 millimetres of mercury. And this is in an individual sitting in an upright position. And as you can see in this next slide here, all we've simply done is taken a standard Australian Medical Sheepskin wheelchair pad and placed that on top of the pressure reducing device and you can see that the pressure rating has dropped significantly. It's dropped by actually 60 millimetres of mercury in where the bony prominences are, down to 140 millimetres of mercury, which is a massive pressure reduction for a person sitting in an upright position on a standard wheelchair. Now, as we progress here, we've already talked about these aspects, but the desired outcomes are that we need to reduce the pressure of the skin interface. We also need to reduce the moisture content and also the shearing, and that is all achieved by the Australian Medical Sheepskin. But because every follicle or fibre in the sheepskin is naturally hollow, it enables the product to maintain our body temperature at 98.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees centigrade. 
Going on further, uh, further from there, the fibre con content, as we said, is around 75,000 fibres per square inch, which does reduce the pressure. And at the same time, the hollow fibre is what creates the wicking aspect to enable the path or the flow of that moisture content to go to the leather itself. This product is, as we've said, from the Australian Merino sheep, and the leather content acts as a receptacle for the moisture content, which then draws that moisture away to the leather and doesn't leave it at the wound site itself. To explain how detrimental moisture content is, if I took a self-adhesive bandage and wrapped that around the middle of my index finger, as you can see here, and I go to bed and I get up the next morning and I take that band-aid off, you can see what's happened to the skin tissue. The moisture that has come from that uh, self-adhesive bandage has flooded that layer of tissue and taken up any available room in that tissue that would normally allow oxygenated blood to flow into that tissue. When that occurs, there is a blood flow through to that point and says, whoa, 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 stop, we can't fit into this layer of tissue above because there's already too much moisture content in that tissue. The problem with that moisture content is that there is no oxygen in that moisture content. So that skin tissue is already dying, showing signs of dying due to a lack of oxygen. We haven't even factored in pressure or shearing or any other cause for that tissue to die. It is simply moisture content in that tissue. If we take that exact same aspect to an individual that has a wound, either on the coccyx, on the back of the heels, if there is moisture content built up at that wound site and is trapped in place by these plastic type or silicone type or foam type dressings that we constantly see being utilized on wounds and we trap that moisture content in at the skin interface, that moisture is going to do exactly to that tissue what the moisture content is doing to the tissue around the finger. It's going to starve that tissue of oxygen, which in turn is going to cause that tissue to die and the wound to become deeper and larger, which we see all too often. Continuing on from there, causes of wounds. Now, as we've already talked about, we have preventable type wounds, which we know are pressure, moisture and shearing. But non-preventable wounds are trauma, burns, surgical and infectious related wounds. So if I'm in a house fire, uh, I may get burned if I'm in a motor vehicle accident, I may suffer a trauma-related wound, and so on. All of these wounds are caused by different reasons. They're not all caused for the same thing. But the one thing that all these wounds have in common is what they require to heal, and that is called oxygenated blood. The minute that we start drawing oxygenated blood flow into that tissue, we then have what we require in that fluid to heal a wound. Now, looking at the going, if we went back to the finger aspect, that white tissue on the finger, if we're not getting oxygenated blood flow into that tissue, we're also not getting our protein cells, we're not getting our white blood cells to help fight the infection, and also, very importantly, we are not getting the anti anti antibiotic into that tissue. And in so many cases, we see infectious wounds that the antibiotic is having zero effect on because there is too much moisture content at that wound site. Australian medical sheepskin, when uh, used as a dressing or the sheep saw disposable wound dressing, allows that moisture content to be wicked away from that wound site and will allow that, uh, the blood flow to flow into that tissue, which has everything in it that we need to heal the wound. The sheep salt disposable wound dressing is a completely sterile wound dressing that is being used very, very effectively in healing all kinds of wounds, not just pressure-related, moisture or shearing-related wounds, but also, as we said, trauma, burns, surgical and infectious-related wounds as well. Continuing on from there, the product launders exactly the same as standard linen in a, an institutional-type setting and or in a home-type setting as well. Uh, the product is able to be tumble dried up to uh, temperatures of 60 degrees centigrade but more importantly in the wash its ability to be laundered to 80 degrees centigrade for thermal disinfection is incredible. Skin sand detergent must always be used uh, which you can see a picture of the skin sand there that enables the product to be disinfected bacterially it also has a wetting agent in it to keep the leather soft and supple and it has a, a very vibrant flushing agent in it that keeps all of the fibre separated and the bodily fluids um, flushed from the hollow fibre so that the product is then cleaned 
and is ready to receive more fluid. If we do not wash Australian medical sheepskin on a regular basis and keep it up to snuff, it will stop working. Once it fills up with bodily fluids, it does not do its job, so it does need to be laundered on a regular basis. Patient requirements are that the individuals being treated uh, in these situations where they're dealing with wounds, they need an adequate diet. In their diet, they need a higher protein uh, intake. Protein is what builds granulated tissue in wounds. And that can be achieved if you have a finicky eater and they don't want to eat meat or they, don't, uh, they, they can't eat peanut butter or peanuts and such that are high in protein. Uh, there are many uh, drinks available, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry and such in a milk type format that are very, very high in protein and will assist in getting that protein into the body so that the blood has uh, the product that can form the granulated tissue to help fill the wounds back up because we need these products to enable the body to do what it needs to do. We also need adherence to prescribe medications. So whatever doctor says that they need to be taking, they must stick to those, to those medications. We also need circulation to the affected area. If we do not have any circulation to a limb, uh, you, can add, you can adequately say that uh, there may not be help for some individuals and a Doppler test will tell us whether they uh, do have sufficient circulation to the limb or not. And from there they also need to be under the care and supervision of qualified medical help um, to assist them in the healing process of their wounds and or the prevention of wounds, which is the best medicine to, uh, to uh, utilise. Australian Medical Sheepskin has had a number of trials conducted um, on the product itself and we're going to get into a series of photographs now that these photographs are quite uh, graphic in nature and they will become more graphic as we progress but we're going to show you pre-existing wounds and how Australian Medical Sheepskin treated those wounds. Uh, these are nine individuals involved in a trial at Battleford District Care Centre located in uh, the uh, Prairie North Health region of Saskatchewan. And you can see that there are a whole varied number of different reasons why wounds occurred. You can see that we had ulcers on the elbows, we've got uh, contracture of the palms, we've got ulcers on the, the uh, coccyx, we also have heel ulcers which were diabetic heel ulcers pre-existing for some period of time. We're going to go through these and explain these wounds to you and how Australian Medical Sheepskin uh, healed these wounds and every single one of these wounds were healed within a 12 week time frame. You can see the resident A here, uh, this lady uh, had a wound on the elbow from leaning on the side of the wheelchair for quite long periods of time and you can see that at the beginning uh, the wound is present and it was actually probable to the bone, which means it's a grade 4 wound. You can see around the outside of the wound all that white mottly tissue, which is telling us that we're not getting blood flow to that area of the body. And that in turn is what is creating this wound due to constriction of the capillaries. This is actually a pressure sore on the elbow itself. You can see that after the application of Australian Medical Sheepskin as a dressing and the elbow protector put in place to hold that dressing in place and actually uh, protect the limb from any further uh, breakdown uh, due to pressure at the skin interface. You can see that at three weeks the wound has already formed a necrotic scab on the outside of the wound. That scab is to be left in place. The reason that that scab is there so that granulated for, uh, tissue can form underneath that necrotic tissue till it gets to a point where that necrotic tissue will self slough. We actually call Australian Medical Sheepskin the sharpest tool in the medic's bag. Is that the Australian Medical Sheepskin will remove that necrotic tissue by itself, as you can see here at six weeks. And we've now basically got this wound back to a grade two healing wound on the Braden scale. Well, I know we're not supposed to go in reverse with the Braden scale, but this is what is happening in a very short time frame. This wound had also been pre existing for a period of around nine months. And you can see down to the period of nine weeks where this wound was completely healed and had left zero scarring whatsoever on this wound. Mechanical debriding of wounds is what leaves the scarring in a wound because when we remove necrotic tissue from a wound, we actually remove granulated tissue that has already formed underneath that, that tissue. So we actually uh, tend to impair the wounds 
uh, healing process. So if we simply leave it alone and allow that tissue to self uh, debride or self slough, it will come away leaving no scarring on the wound itself. This next individual that uh, we have uh, doesn't show any photographs because this lady refused the use of a bed pad on admission to uh, the facility in this trial. And uh, you can see here that she was graded 9 on the Braden scale and she had uh, reddened areas on the buttocks um, that uh, when she, uh, she refused the use of the bed pad due to dementia and such, they had no choice but to put her in a facility bed. Within, a, within about a week you can see that the area on the buttocks um, had uh, formed blisters and was advancing to what we would call a grade 2 wound at that point. Uh, I then received a phone call from the director of care from this facility and she actually stated that all the other wounds are healing but this lady is not, she's getting worse and won't sleep on a bed pad, what do we do? I instructed her that the next time that they take this individual to change her, feed her or bathe her, to remake the bed and put the sheepskin underneath a sheet. And they did that and, <coughs> pardon me, when she came back, was put in the bed, she didn't even realise that the sheepskin was underneath the, uh, the sheet. And uh, within three weeks there was a marked improvement. By the sixth week the wound had disappeared, disappeared and skin showed good blood circulation, which means the skin returned to pink. And that's the biggest telltale is, what, is that we know that we're getting blood flow back into that tissue and that is what is healing these wounds. The next gentleman uh, in this trial was suffering with contracture of the palms and uh, as you know yourself that causes uh, a great deal of breakdown inside the palm where the fingernails tend to dig into the palms and it causes profuse sweating and in many cases we try to use like uh, facial uh, towels and such in the hand to try and stop the, uh, the, the breakdown occurring. Quite often these individuals will spasm and the, uh, the, the, the face cloth will drop away and you the caregiver have to come back and prise those fingers open and get that toweling cloth back into the hand to try and stop the breakdown. You know how bad that smells at the end of the day to begin with and that tells us that we've got bacteria forming due to moisture build up inside the palm. The palm protector utilised in this format you can see we have two different designs. One is a, is a hand wrap and the other one is a finger separated design which you can uh, view on our website and such. But you can see that uh, with this individual uh, in the sixth week the hands could be open without discomfort to the resident and the skin colour on the legs had gone from white to pink. Again saying that there was uh, blood flow being created because this individual was also wearing uh, the, the Australian medical sheepskin boots because there were problems with the legs as well. So we know that we can deal with contracture of the palms there as well. And it is velcroed around the back of the wrist so that if they do spasm it won't drop away from the wrist itself. You can see that this next individual had a grade 2 wound on the coccyx that was completely gone in a six week time frame. But as you look down at the legs here you can see that there's many indentations in the legs which are wounds that were healed previously by mechanical debriding. Now this individual was spasming with their legs into the hardware of the chair causing a lot of these wounds to occur. They didn't utilize the sheepskin on this lady until much later in the process because they didn't realize at the time they were actually able to deal with trauma related wounds of which the sheepskin uh, did very very effectively heal two wounds that she had on her legs and it's a shame that they didn't have them photographed from beginning to end but you can see the scarring on the legs from previous wounds that occurred by mechanical debriding. We've already discussed that. As we continue on, you can see now this individual has a diabetic heel ulcer pre-existing for a period of approximately two years. You can see very, very clearly the color of the foot at the top left-hand photograph. But the foot is pure white, which tells us that we're not getting blood flow into that foot. The wound on the bottom of the heel there is an ungradable wound at this point and when I stated uh, was there any subcutaneous damage in this wound, uh, the director of care of the facility was not sure uh, how much or whether there was subcutaneous damage uh, in the wound but it was quite uh, uh, pr uh, prevalent that we looked at that you could see the bruising around that tissue which 
uh, led me to believe that there would be subcutaneous damage and that that would self-evolve or self-exudate with the use of the sheepskin. Within about a week and a half, that is exactly what happened with this wound. You can see in the second photograph there where the foot has now turned pink. It's gone from white to pink because the Australian Medical Sheepskin has had the ability to absorb that moisture content out of that tissue surrounding the foot, exactly the same as the white tissue around the finger. And it's then been able to help draw that thickened blood from uh, increased sugar levels due to reduction of insulin in the body. It's been able to draw that thickened blood flow into those capillaries and returning the skin tissue to pink. You can see as well that the wound has increased by around about three times its original size. That is all the subcutaneous damage that was sitting underneath that tissue that was brought out naturally by the Australian Medical Sheepskin. You can see in the third photograph here at six weeks, the necrotic tissue that has formed on that wound which is to be left in place as we keep on saying. You can see around the outside of the wound that the tissue is starting to get yellow and flaking or it's beginning to self slough. And you can see at nine weeks there that the wound is a third of its original size at three weeks. But also look at the surrounding um, tissue on that foot. It's almost back to perfect skin turgor again. Um, and the reason being is that throughout this entire process, uh, through the nine weeks, all of the sheepskin has been drawing oxygenated blood flow to that outer layer of skin tissue, which returns the tissue back to its normal pallor again. A very, very important fact, and without going right into the aspects of diabetes and such and why these wounds occur, they occur on the feet because the feet are furthest away from the heart, which the pressure is least and blood flow is very, very difficult to fit into those capillaries that are causing that tissue to turn white. And those capillaries are the same capillaries again as the tissue around the, uh, the, the finger under the, uh, the self-adhesive dressing. So we know for a fact there that by disallowing blood flow getting into that tissue has caused that wound to become far worse. As we progress, we can see that uh, these fellows or these uh, uh, airmen in the aircraft are the reason why we know that the product is a natural insulator. When these aircraft came back across the English Channel, they were like Swiss cheese. Flow through ventilation at 26 to 30,000 feet created sub-zero temperatures that were not survivable by a human being. The only product that these air crew could wear that would keep their blood flowing and or maintain their body temperature at 37 degrees centigrade and keep them alive without freezing to death was sheepskin. They had sheepskin flying jackets, sheepskin flying boots, sheepskin flying mitts, sheepskin flying toques. They had bib and brace overalls made out of sheepskin because it was the only product that would maintain their body temperature at altitude and keep them alive. You take that exact same process and apply that to a diabetic, the process is exactly the same where the sheepskin boots will warm the limb temperature back up to 37 degrees centigrade which will help to increase blood flow into that limb which you saw in the previous slide. If we, if we adopt that process for diabetics, the outcome for them is absolutely dramatic. In this next series of slides, you're going to see a colt that was born to be a registered cutting horse on a farm. And uh, this was brought to me when I was doing a seminar in a facility in Alberta. Um, you can see that this is the left shoulder of the colt, and there's his ear and his head, his, his head is down eating the grass. And you can see a series of wounds on his left shoulder that were caused by a gelding kicking and biting this little guy from the day that he was born. He was actually born to be a registered cutting horse and in that he can have absolutely no scarring whatsoever. I was asked if the Australian Medical Sheepskin would help this little fellow in healing his wounds and I gave a 100% guarantee that if they got his protein up, kept him away from the gelding, uh, kept his meds intact that the uh, vet had put him on, and if they changed the sheepskin dressings morning and night, that they would uh, definitely be able to get rid of these wounds. You can see the sheer cliff face edges of these wounds, which tells you that these are wounds in progression. They're actually tunneling, one's tunneling up, one's tunneling toward the other wound. And these are wounds that are not going to heal, period. Now, as we progress, or before we leave that, you can see that in uh, the third wound down the bottom there, that you can see the drain that is... Um, 
uh, coming from this wound, that was placed there by the vet in a bid to try and control the moisture content at the wound site itself, clearly not working. So from that on in, the, uh, the sheepskin was applied over the, uh, the, the dressings themselves. And you can see that within a 10 day time frame that the wounds have reduced so much in size, but I want you to note the rolling of the edges because that is characteristic of how Australian Medical Sheepskin heals wounds. The tunneling has stopped, the wounds are not progressing towards each other and you can see that the drains have become uh, la too large to fit into the wounds. And the vet was actually called out this particular day to remove these drains. She was astonished to see the change that had taken place in a 10 day time frame. She removed the drains and from there they were holding the, uh, the sheepskin dressings in place with a half a pair of pyjama pants which you can see on the front left leg. But at 14 days these are the wounds that were what we call cookie cutter wounds where they had sheer cliff face edges. You can see we've got granulated tissue has formed in that biggest wound that you could fit your fist into and that all of the wounds are regressing in size or coming back and even on the elbow at the back you can see that the tendon has got granulated tissue coverage over the back of that right now. The occupational therapist that owned this cult photographed from the back of the elbow showing how much rolling of the tissue was occurring which means that the wound was, was again healing. You can see here at 21 days that necrotic tissue is formed on that wound that you could fit your fist into and the vet was present on this particular day and said while I'm here why, do, why don't I uh, not debride that wound while I'm here and the occupational therapist said no we were told not to debride these wounds if we wanted no scarring to occur. The vet complied with that and they continued on with the product. At three weeks and four days or 35 days later you can see that the two wounds in the middle are gone the one that you can fit your fist into is almost a memory and so is one on the back of the elbow and tendon. One of the big things to look at here is the amount of hair regeneration around that wound site. Quite astonishing um, that the hair came back and the reason that it did was because we had created blood flow to the outer layers of tissue utilising the Australian medical sheepskin. The, at this photograph you can see that um, this was approximately three months from the, the date that the wounds were completely healed and it took six weeks for those wounds to be completely healed but here he is as a registered cutting horse not only did he not get put down or did he just turn into a, a little horse to run the kids around on but he was actually able to be registered as a cutting horse because there was zero scarring where those wounds were and the beautiful thing about this is that all of this was done in a barnyard one of the most highly infectious environments that you can have now progressing on to the human aspect you can see here that this is a wound on the back of a lady's coccyx that had been pre-existing for six years. The cost factor of these wounds that this lady had were absolutely astonishing. But like the colt, you can see these sheer cliff face edges around the wound as well. The wound is, is tunnelling in the top of the wound and the spine is actually exposed in that initial photograph. As the photographs progress, I want you to note that how circular the wound is becoming with also those rolled edges occurring just like the colt did. That's showing the wound in regression, not progression. And as we get up close and nasty, you can see all of that moisture content in that wound is what is drowning that tissue and tissue and causing that wound to get bigger. As that continues to keep on going, the wound is tunneling up here and now we have an exposed spine. But very soon after utilizing the Australian Medical Sheepskin at four weeks, you can see that the spine has opened up. So the product or the Australian Medical Sheepskin has taken away all of that dead and dying tissue and allowing that wound to start to heal. You can see the rolled edges around the outside of the wound and as we progress you can see that the wound has turned perfectly circular. Look at the granulated tissue starting to form on the spine itself. A week later at eight weeks you can see how much more granulated tissue has started occurring on that wound. Quite dramatic to see it at that point but the wound is also becoming far more shallow. This next photograph you can see the capillary action occurring there. You can actually see a blood spot in there which means that we are getting oxygenated blood flow out to those outer layers of tissue where it's now doing, doing the good and it's actually also getting the antibiotic into those tissues as well. The spine is virtually completely covered at that point and this is what happens if someone comes along and does not put saline solution where the wool fibre is in a bit to allow that dressing to relax off the wound without tearing it away. Uh, an RN came along and put the saline on the leather, not on the wool fibre, tore it away and you can see it took that skin flap away. 
This wound before this lady passed away from renal failure very sadly at 24 weeks was down to the size of a quarter. And that had been a wound pre-existing for six years. Same lady, the second wound on her body of which she had four wounds, you can see is the back of her heel, which is a diabetic heel ulcer, also pre-existing for six years. You can see that the wound was gangrenous and within a four week time frame that necrotic tissue had again self sloughed or came away by itself uh, or autolytically debrided by itself with the use of the Australian medical sheepskin. You can see that the wound is bleeding now and that is the fluid that we need to heal these wounds. And at this point at four weeks that necrotic tissue is already starting to form on the deepest parts of the wound. As we break this down you can see that that necrotic cap was gangrenous and when it came away it exposed the heel bone and brought the, the wound back to the fresh material. This is what you would normally try to achieve with mechanical debriding. Australian Medical Sheepskin did that completely by itself and it did it painlessly. As we progress you can now see massive granulation occurring within that heel but also formation of new necrotic tissue is formed on those deepest parts of the wound. If you look down the bottom you can see that, that there's a, uh, a dark area on the very bottom of that wound showing necrotic tissue and look at it one week later. It's already getting ready to self slough or wipe away by itself, again causing no pain to the individual. You can see massive granulation occurring here at 13 weeks and the, uh, the, the bone or the heel bone still has that necrotic tissue on it because we said no debriding of bone because when we debride a bone we let all kinds of infections get into the bone which I believe is where MRSA comes from which we'll be talking about in the, in the, the next and or the last wound that we're going to be talking about in this session. You can see here at 23 weeks massive granulation has occurred with full tissue regeneration and you can see that the only uh, open part is at the bottom of that wound but look at that blood flow. That is the fluid that we need to heal these wounds and that's what's been occurring throughout this entire process. This lady's wounds, of which she had four wounds on her body and I've shown you two, had cost the health system over the last six years just for the cost of dressings and nursing time to change those dressings, $1.6 million. She was consuming $49,512 worth of dressings and nursing time to change those dressings every 90 days. The Australian Medical Sheepskin got the wounds back to this point for a cost of approximately $5,000, a mere fraction of the original cost of what it had cost for the wounds to progress to the point that they did. Sadly, she passed away at 24 weeks in the trial from renal failure, but this shows categorically that there was massive healing occurring at end of life. The last wound that I'm going to go through here with you is an MRSA positive wound that had been pre-existing for approximately two and a half years. Uh, the wound, uh, the, uh, the foot was scheduled for amputation and the surgeon basically said do what you can but do not cause any further harm because we are amputating regardless and the reason being was that the man was MRSA positive. Um, the use of Australian medical sheepskin on this individual, you can see that here at this stage the bottom of the heel, uh, that is the back of this man's right heel, uh, is all silvery and such and there's all dead and dying tissue there. Prior to utilising the Australian Medical Sheepskin, they did actually mechanically debride this wound, but you can see the mucus that's been trapped in that wound by the, the foam dressings, the silicone type dressings and such that they were utilising, and it's still actually drowning this wound. That mucus has no life-giving properties in it whatsoever. So as we progress on, you can see that once the Australian Medical Sheepskin was utilised, that necrotic tissue formed on the top left hand part of this wound and you can see in the middle that there's actually blood flow flowing out to the outer layers of tissue. That now has the antibiotic and the white blood cells and the protein cells and more importantly the oxygen cells that we require to keep that tissue alive and to regenerate that tissue. Uh, also note the rolling edges of the wound as well which is uh, a characteristic as we've already discussed. Now you can see that the necrotic tissue has self sloughed on the top left hand part of this, uh, this wound and uh, the wound is very very clean and it's much shallower than it originally was. At this point here we've got virtually a flush wound, beautiful bright red tissue in the middle which is all granulation uh, occurring within the wound itself because we actually have blood flow into, in, that, in that tissue. Now here's what happens when someone comes along and takes away 
The Australian Medical Sheepskin Protocol and replaces it with the old standard of the silicone dressings, the foams and such. There was some, uh, some stuff that came along uh, that were not clued into the use of Australian Medical Sheepskin and went back to the old standard. Here's pretty much what happened. You can see that the wound is turning white again, so we know that we've now got blood flow being abated to the wound. The wound is very moist at this point. But look at the damage on top. The bruising occurring around the outside of that wound due to the adhesive being used from these self-adhesive dressings. Look how bad it got. Look at all of that extra damage around the top of the, uh, the wound site itself. That is how bad adhesive, just from an adhesive bandage going around a finger or being placed on healthy tissue around the wound site itself, creates such damage that causes the wound to regress. Once this was uh, shown, the, uh, the old dressings were taken away, the Australian sheepskin standard was put back in place and the wound had progressed to this point here. You can see that again, necrotic tissue formed on that deepest part of the wound, which it will continue to do throughout the healing process of the wound. As long as the wound is deep enough that it needs a cut, for granulation to occur underneath, necrotic tissue will form on the wound and must be left to um, self-abate um, once it is, the tissue is ready to do so. Which you can see here at this point, they've done the comparison between where they started with the sheepskin and to where they were at that point. They then discontinued the use of the sheepskin dressings and simply donned boots, or sheepskin boots bilaterally for protection to the foot and you can see there that we have a perfectly regenerated foot with no scarring whatsoever. The, the whole foot, you can see the skin tissue is back to normal skin pallor again because even with just utilising the boots, we are still attracting that blood flow to the outer layers of skin tissue. This man still has his foot and it saved a $250,000 surgery and uh, occupational uh, or, or physiotherapist treatment and such uh, along with prostheses, this man still has his foot. So you can see that not only being able to prevent wounds from recurring, but being able to treat pre-existing wounds. And we don't care whether they are pressure, moisture, shearing, trauma, burns, surgical or infectious related wounds. All wounds have the same thing in common in which they require to heal. That is called oxygenated blood and that is exactly what Australian Medical Sheepskin does. It allows the process for moisture absorption from the skin tissue to allow oxygenated blood to fill in that tissue which has everything that we require. We know we can reduce the pressure because of the amount of fibres per square inch. We also know that we can prevent moisture content building up at the skin interface because of the hollow fibre being able to wick that moisture content away to the leather, creating room, as we've already said, for oxygenated blood to flow into that tissue. We know we can also reduce the shearing because of the way that the fibre moves with the skin tissue. And we also know, very importantly, that we can maintain standard body temperature for somebody sitting or laying in bed, sitting in a wheelchair all day long, and or um, getting blood flow to the outer layers of tissue due to uh, absorption and maintaining limb temperature for a diabetic's feet as well. I hope you've gained a lot of information from this session. I am now going to be ready uh, and available by phone for any questions that you may have. Please feel free to uh, ask as many questions as you uh, need answered and we will endeavour to do that for you. Thank you so much for your time.